Dino fans, brace yourselves, because this is massive. After a quarter century, walking with dinosaurs is storming back, and it's more jaw-dropping than ever. We're talking fresh science, next-level CGI, and prehistoric giants like you've never seen them before. Now roll back the clock over 66 million years. You're in a dense, steamy forest during the late Cretaceous, and suddenly, the ground quakes. Something huge is coming. It's a titanosaur, one of the biggest creatures to ever walk the Earth. Think 130 feet long, 70 tons heavy, that's heavier than a space shuttle, just crashing through the undergrowth like it owns the place. This massive plant muncher wasn't just a tourist in its ecosystem, it was shaping it. With every step, it snapped trees, flattened plants, and opened up skylights in the forest canopy, letting sunlight flood down where it hadn't before. For the plants, it was just another rough day in the Mesozoic. These dinos weren't just part of the ecosystem, they were changing it. Their constant presence over millions of years forced plants to adapt. That's why so many ancient flowering plants started going for a spray and pray strategy, producing tons of tiny seeds, hoping a few would survive the chaos. But then, it all changed. The KPG extinction event wiped out the giant dinosaurs almost overnight, and with them gone, Earth's ecological game board got flipped. One of the most unexpected results? A world suddenly bursting with fruit. With the giant grazers gone, flowering plants got creative. Fruit became a new way to spread seeds, with help from hungry animals. And before long, the world was full of fruit and fruit lovers. Hard to imagine life without fruit now, right? But here's the wild part. Fruit only exists because of a deep time partnership between plants and animals that's been evolving for over 100 million years. It's not just a snack. It's a juicy, colorful symbol of one of the most incredible alliances in natural history. Here's the deal. Plants aren't giving out fruit just to be nice. They're investing serious energy and resources into growing those big, juicy, seed-packed treats. Why? To attract animals that'll eat the fruit. And here's the genius part. Carry those seeds off and drop them somewhere new. It's nature's version of free shipping. Fruit, in other words, is a clever evolutionary tactic. And it's worked really well. In fact, scientists estimate that in today's tropical forests, up to 94% of all woody plants produce some kind of fleshy fruit. That's nearly every tree playing the fruit game. And animals? They've totally bought in. Most of the critters in those forests have evolved to eat at least some fruit. It's a win-win. Plants get their seeds spread, and animals get a sweet snack. But here's the catch. Like any evolutionary move, Fruit only makes sense when the ecosystem is set up for it. And for most of Earth's history, the world just wasn't ready. Back in the 1980s, scientists began piecing together an idea. During the age of dinosaurs, those massive plant-eating giants, the mega herbivores, weren't just munching greenery, they were shaping the very forests they lived in. Constant trampling, grazing, crashing through trees, they created non-stop chaos. And because of that, early flowering plants had to play a numbers game. Their best shot at survival? Produce tons of small seeds and hope a few made it. That's what ecologists call R selection. All about quantity over quality. And fruit? Not really part of the plan. But then, the asteroid hit, and the dinosaurs vanished. Suddenly, everything changed. Forests started to bounce back during the Paleocene, and this time, without giant dinosaurs wrecking the place, they grew back thicker, darker, and way more stable. That's when flowering plants switched gears. Instead of pumping out tons of seeds, they started going for fewer, bigger, better protected ones. That's called K-selection, quality over quantity. And that shift didn't just change how plants reproduced, it also changed the competition. In those shadier, denser forests, sunlight became a hot commodity, and plants had to work harder to grow tall and grab their share of the light. Here's where it gets even juicier, literally. Using carbon isotope data from fossilized leaves, scientists figured out that the thick Paleocene forests let in about 19% less light compared to the more open forests of the Cretaceous. That drop in sunlight? it pushed plants to double down on bigger seeds packed with extra energy. Why? Because a seed with a full tank grows faster and taller, 
perfect for reaching light in those crowded, shady jungles. And bigger seeds also meant more juicy, fleshy coatings around them, nature's way of saying, hey animals, eat me and carry my seeds. This was perfect for the new crew of seed dispersers, small to medium-sized mammals and birds. Now, some of these mammals and birds were starting to bulk up during the Paleocene, stepping into roles left behind by the dinosaurs. But let's be real, they were still lightweights compared to a 70-ton sauropod. In fact, nothing even close to those dino giants would ever roam Earth again. The megafauna of the Mesozoic was gone for good, but that was kind of the point. These smaller animals were just right, big enough to handle the job of moving seeds, but not so massive that they wrecked the forest in the process. It was the perfect storm. The ecosystem was finally stable. Fruit was everywhere, and animals were ready to eat and spread it. By around 55 to 50 million years ago, during the Eocene, Earth hit peak fruit. Tropical forests covered huge parts of the planet, even reaching up into the Arctic. And those forests were bursting with every kind of fruit you can imagine. Big ones, tiny ones, fruits with weird shapes, wild colors, you name it. This fruity explosion created brand new opportunities for fruit eaters to evolve. Among the first were birds and an extinct group of rodent-like mammals called multi-tuberculates, ranging from mouse-sized to beaver-sized. And soon, they were joined by other fruit fanatics, real rodents, fruit bats, and yes, primates. That's right. Our early primate ancestors were part of this fruit-fueled boom. Swinging through the dark canopies of the Eocene, munching on fleshy fruit, they were setting the stage for our story. The bond between primates and fruit goes way back. It may have all started in those rich, tangled forests over 50 million years ago. And if the dinosaurs hadn't vanished, if those dense, fruity jungles had never taken over, there's a good chance primates like us never would have evolved. So yeah, the next time you bite into an apple or peel a banana, remember, you're tasting the legacy of a mass extinction, a forest rebirth, and an ancient alliance between plants and animals that literally shaped who we are. Now, let's be real. It's not exactly easy to untangle how all of this played out over millions of years. You've got massive plant-munching dinosaurs shaping entire forests, light filtering through dense canopies, flowering plants adjusting their seed sizes, and animals evolving right alongside them to spread those seeds. That's a lot of moving pieces. And while fossils give us incredible clues, they can only tell part of the story. That's why, in 2025, a group of scientists built a mathematical model to simulate how all these long-term ecological interactions might have unfolded over geologic time. And guess what? Their model picked up on something really interesting. Toward the end of the Eocene, about 33 million years ago, the average seed size actually started to shrink, dropping significantly from its earlier peak. Why? Because some land mammals had finally gotten huge, big enough to start acting like true mega herbivores. Think of the Bronto theories nicknamed Thunder Beasts. These giants started having an impact on forests in a way that echoed the old school dino ecosystem engineers. Not quite T-Rex levels, but close enough to make waves. So what does that mean for us today? Well, the same model makes two bold predictions about what might be happening right now and where we could be headed. On one hand, big mammals have been disappearing fast. Starting with the Pleistocene extinctions around 50,000 years ago and still happening today, we've lost giants like the South American ground sloths and armor-plated glyptodons. The average body size of large animals in some regions has dropped from over 1,800 pounds to just around 180. This loss mirrors what happened when the dinosaurs went extinct and according to the model, if this trend keeps up, we could see forests getting denser and darker again, kind of like a throwback to the early Eocene. And that might push plants to grow bigger seeds and ramp up fruit diversity once more. But here's the twist, there's another path. Today, we humans are the dominant ecosystem engineers. We're cutting, burning, clearing, and reshaping forests all over the planet. And while there aren't many real mega herbivores left, 
were doing a pretty convincing job of filling their role by disturbing and opening up forest ecosystems. The model says that if we keep this up, the long-term effect could be a drop in average seed size, maybe by as much as 60%. So, which future are we heading toward? A world of dense, fruit-filled forests, or one where plants go back to tiny, low-investment seeds because of the chaos we're creating? Either way, one thing's clear. Just like the dinosaurs once did, our actions today are shaping the future of fruit and the evolution of life on Earth. While fruit may have gotten its evolutionary start thanks to the planet-shaping power of dinosaurs, its future? That's on us. Because today, the fate of fruit doesn't lie with giant reptiles, but with one small two-legged species that's become Earth's most powerful ecosystem engineer, humans. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.